everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know already guys, I am a beekeeper and hang on a second. Here we go. So this week I was asked to take part in something called Science Show Off, which is a little bit like stand up, but for science communicators. And I've never done it before. Really, really excited. And it's curated by a mathematician. And I thought, oh, I'm actually, I'm, re I'm no good at maths guys. However, bees happen to be really great at it. So this is why bees are nature's greatest mathematicians. There's just the one species of honeybee in the UK and that is Apis mellifera, exactly the same ladies that we keep at home in our four hives. And they're known for their ability to produce and store honey in the geometrically impressive waxy comb. But how exactly do they make it? Well, let me tell you because I think this is brilliant. Between the ages of 12 and 20 days old, the bees have a special gland in their stomach that's able to convert sugar from the honey into a waxy substance that is then ejected as a wax scale out of their abdomen. That actually happens. For a short period of time, a bee basically becomes a wax printer. They just reach down, whip a wax flake out of their tummy, and that's when they can gnaw it up, make it nice and malleable, and then they'll turn it into their little honeycomb cells. But what's more impressive is that despite never studying tessellations theory, Mother Nature has instilled in the bee a sort of geometrical forethought, which enables them to make one of the most mathematically and architecturally efficient designs around the beehive. You'd think once they've gnawed up their waxy flake that the obvious thing to do would be to make a circular shaped cell. They could just gnaw it off and then they just spin in a little bee-shaped circle and voila, you're done. But of course, if they were to do this, if they were to create circular cells, you've got all of this wasted space in between and also you'd have to make separate cell walls for every single cell. And that's just a waste of space and not very good time management and also just a waste of materials. Instead, thanks to an evolutionary history of trial and error, bees have developed an understanding of self-tessellating regular polygons. Oh yeah, maths people. <laughs> and these are the three, the square, the triangle and the hexagon. All three of these shapes save the wasted space problem because they self-tessellate. And the bees could have gone with any one of these as the shape of their cell, but they haven't. As we know, they went with the hexagon. And the reason they've done this is because the hexagon has the smallest perimeter, yet offers the bees the largest amount of space. So by going with a hexagon, they can use the least amount of wax to build their cells, yet have the most amount of storage space to keep their honey afterwards. It's genius. The next reason why bees are great at maths and better at it than I am is because they've essentially solved the traveling salesman problem. A foraging bee is a little bit like a salesman traveling between cities in that they're both trying to find the optimum route to minimize their costs. Computers would go about finding the shortest route by looking at every possible route, calculating them, and then finding the shortest one. But bees go about it by brute force, trial and error, and will always come to the same conclusion as a computer. There was actually a study which tracked the way bees flew around flowers in a set area. Out of a possible 120 flight routes, the bees always found the most efficient one in around 20 trips. So they didn't even need to calculate all of the possibilities to find the shortest route. This sort of act of memory and learning, we previously thought was something only larger brained animals were capable of, but the bee went and proved us wrong. The bee's final mathematic feat is actually thanks to their internal body clock and polarized eyes, which allow them to communicate the distance and direction to a decent food source to the rest of the colony, and they communicate it through the medium of dance. It's actually known as the waggle dance. When a bee returns to the hive after a successful trip, she wants to let everybody else know where this great source of food is. So the first thing she does is take to the dance floor, actually known as the dance floor, or AKA the first vertical honeycomb in a beehive. And what you'll see her do is known as a waggle run. She will run in a set direction whilst shaking her ass, and then she will loop round to the right, and then shake her ass again in the same direction and loop round to the left, sort of completing a figure of eight. And this dance gives the rest of the colony a lot of information. The direction of which she runs actually corresponds to the angle of the food source in relation to the sun. Inside a hive, straight up, vertical, if she was to run straight up means 
into the direction of the sun. So if she was to get in, waggle straight upwards, then the rest of the bees would know to fly straight towards the sun. If the food source was, let's say, 90 degrees to the right of this imaginary line to the sun, when she landed on the dance floor, she would perform her waggle 90 degrees to the right of the vertical. And what's impressive is that she'll even compensate the angle of the sun in relation to the food source depending on the time of day because of this internal body clock. She just knows where the sun's going to be. What's more, on top of her waggle run, the longer she's performing her figure of eight for tells us exactly how far away the food source is. And then if she's really excited about it, like really going for it, you know that it's a proper good source of food. So if she's really excited, waggling away, but performing the figure of eight dance for a long time, then you know that the food source is a bit of a trek, but it's gonna be worth it. So those are my three reasons why I think bees make one of nature's greatest mathematicians. And I figure let's end on a bit of a waggle dance party, everybody, with the help of the queen bee herself. Wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you subscribe for more videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And down below here, I've got two more videos all about the bees we keep at home if you're interested. So I'll see you soon. Bye. What's amazing is that not only hexagons, not only, blah, blah, lights changed again. Sorry, this is just something. Ah, okay, there we go.